Hello again. I know that I've said this before, but it is perhaps worth repeating that I have not the slightest animosity towards those who wish to change sex. It's none of my business, and as long as it doesn't affect me or my family, then I'm happy for such people to get on with their private concerns. The difficulties which are arising now with increasing frequency are that the more militant of these types seem determined to push harder and harder and to make what most of us regard as decidedly odd and sometimes unacceptable demands. Take, for example, the insistence on using women's changing rooms and lavatories. When things reach this pitch, then I feel that their lifestyle is no longer a purely personal thing and has become something which has a direct effect upon my family. And so I feel able to comment upon the matter. My wife found herself trying on clothes in a shop in London the other week in the presence of somebody who clearly had a penis and was by any ordinary person's definition a man. She is no more shy or prudish than I am, but did feel this was a bit much and resolved not to use that particular shop again. Unfortunately, this will not solve the problem because most clothing shops now are so caught up in this mad rush not to appear transphobic that they will most of them welcome people with penises to wander into the women's changing rooms and also the women's lavatories. Very few women are keen on this development, but those who have objected have been denounced as being prejudiced and wishing to harm trans people, which is absurd. It seems that my wife was not alone in her experience because a British newspaper the other day tried an experiment which was to send a bearded reporter, a six foot tall man, to various London shops and try and buy women's clothing, saying that he identified as female and asked if it was okay to use the women's changing rooms. I give a link in the description to this video to the newspaper article about this experiment. It seems that the British Retail Consortium guidance says that shoppers should be able to choose which changing rooms and facilities they feel most comfortable in and fit their own identity. John Lewis and Marks and Spencers are among the big companies buying into this madness. For my own part, I am quite indifferent to the gender of anybody around when I'm getting undressed. So it wouldn't bother me in the least if I were trying on a pair of trousers and found somebody of the opposite sex in the changing room. Many women, though, are touchy about this and do not want somebody with a penis who is not their husband seeing them in their bra and knickers. Who can blame them? If you think that's loopy, and let's face it, most ordinary people do, then wait until you hear about the Scottish police idea for allowing arrested men and women to self-identify the gender to which they belong. If somebody is arrested and questioned, the police will ask which gender the person thinks that he or she belongs to. If a man has been arrested for rape, and this question was specifically asked and answered by the police in Scotland, if a man has been arrested for rape and says that he identifies as female, then the crime could end up being recorded as committed by a woman. This explains why in crime statistics in recent years it appears that women are becoming increasingly violent and prone to stabbing people or sexually assaulting them. In almost every instance, these are offences committed by somebody with a penis who then goes on to claim really to be a woman. Some of these characters even get sent to women's prisons and it will probably surprise nobody to learn that there has been more than one instance of somebody with a penis being convicted of a sexual assault on a woman, sent to a women's prison, and they promptly assault sexually a woman there. What is that old saying about not being able to make it up?